stunt time. Let's hope the merge goes a bit smoother than that because the Bellatrix update is complete and pre-merge excitement has now reached critical mass. Literally, everyone is talking about it. Check out our reporter Tom and this report. Excuse me, sir. Are you uh, excited about the merge? What's that? Good question. Are you excited about it, though? Huh. With ETH on the verge of becoming sexy, deflationary, ultrasound. Ooh, ultrasound money. Everyone and their dog's dog's dog has been aping in to secure an ENS domain, with the seven-day volume on OpenSea surpassing the likes of Bored Ape Yacht Club, Other Deeds, and Artifact Clones. This, my friends, is peak merge mania. And if you're feeling FOMO, you can check out our ENS tutorial by clicking the link right there. Go on, click it. You know you want to. It's actually quite good. Because, you know, why have a randomly assigned public key when you can snap up cool NFTs like 078268820.eth or ha, this zinger 710547.eth. The ladies will love it. And yet, and yet, it does make me think of personalized number plates on posh cars. Oh, contain yourselves, because as our boys Ryan and David can scarcely believe, in spite of this pre-merge hype getting cranked up all the way to 11, Solana Summer is back. What? And leading the charge is the NFT collection du jour, Yotes. Did you say Yotes? Yes, Your Honor. Yotes. Formerly known as Duppies and they've generated crazy hype and delivered the numbers to back it up. So today, we'll be examining the utopian dream. Is it just a flash in the pan, or could the team's approach prove a landmark moment for NFTs and grammar? All that coming right up. This, as it ever was, is The Defiant. So Yotes, and it's zero zero in the middle, like C00. This is the new 15,000 item PFP collection taking the space by storm. And the wizard behind the curtain, the man pulling the strings, is this guy. De Gods founder and blatant Antifa hooligan, Frank. Frank De Gods. Now Frank's an impressive guy because in between picketing MAGA rallies and dismantling capitalism, he's also built one of the most loyal and thriving NFT communities across all chains. The gods enjoyed a new lease of life this year by dying. Holders could state their the gods to earn the dust token and finally transcend their NFTs to immortal dead god status. Given the team's huge success, it became the number one collection on Solana by far, don't you know? The easy path here would have been to follow the old Yuga playbook with some kind of derivative collection like the dogs, for example, or even worse, the rogs, or I don't know. But Frank went back to the drawing board for an original collection that aims to shape the course of Web3 forever. Or to quote Frank himself, we tried some shit, we learned some shit, and now we're trying some new shit. How Web3. And that is exactly how builders should be thinking. But before we dive into this new shit they'd be trying and why it matters and what brand of bog roll you should be using to wipe up the shit when it comes out, here's a very quick message from our sponsors. Optimized for security and sustainability, Aura is bringing strong yield on stables, Ether, and key DeFi assets back to Ethereum. Aura is trusted by over $300 million in TVL from users and DAOs like Balancer, Gnosis, Rocketpool, Notional, and Olympus. Visit Aura.finance today and participate in protocol governance to get access to DeFi's newest home for reserve assets. Who just clicks away from making your idle assets productive. So Utes is a 15k collection and the first step on the road to getting one of these is to mint one of these, a tube, which you then burn or redeem for your Ute NFT. And according to the revealed artwork, they should look something like this. Anyway, 9,500 tubes were reserved for dead gods holders, leaving only around 3,500 available for whitelisting. But whitelisting is clearly fascist, so Frank and his crew came up with an interesting alternative scholarships, allowing aspiring youths to apply to this elite and exclusive club. Think Web3's answer to the Soho house. If you're cool enough and at least a seven, you're in. 
Suffice it to say, the applications came in thick and fast with over 11,000 in the first 24 hours, and more than 70,000 since the official announcement of sign up to be scholars at this house of beautiful education. Yes, as Summer pointed out, Utes is even more selective than Harvard. Supply and demand, kids, you know it works every single time. Now, many applications were, in fact, incredibly imaginative. Either way, this was an ingenious viral marketing strategy, and apart from a few delays and, by all accounts, an occasionally frustrating mint process, the big day itself saw Solano records smashed across the board. Now, there's no denying that Frank and the team have indeed absolutely crushed it. But the really interesting thing about Utes isn't the clever marketing or the organic viral efficiency of the scholarship system or the wider brand itself. It's actually their innovative approach to everyone's favorite topic, IP rights. And this is the reason why the project garnered so much attention. And during an interview with Kevin Rose, Frank himself acknowledged that IP isn't really such a big deal in the Solana community, at least not compared to across the Ethereum Isle with all its accompanying hand wringing. Hype is hype, FOMO is FOMO. And human behavior, well, it's a little bit weird. Even Wayne Rooney was aping in like a maniac. And whatever smart money is, well, they were aping too. Meanwhile, for those with, with a genuine interest in IP and NFTs, Frank is actually trying some pretty cool shit. This is the Y paper. But why, why? Because white papers are fascist, bro. And Y refers to a common sense approach to NFT intellectual property that could propel Utes to becoming the greatest collection of all time. 10 points for bold aspirations. The white paper itself, it's pretty high level stuff and an expansive four pages long, but the basic premise is to promote a democratized creator economy in the Utes ecosystem. First, they're creating a Utes store where artists or indeed anyone can submit custom traits and earn royalties by owning IP in the form of a Y token. But why? There are, of course, some key criteria. You can't simply draw a giant vitalic-sized wanger and fix it to your ute's forehead. Alas, traits are approved by being of a certain standard, conforming to specific dimensions, and obviously any lewd and hateful content will be banned straight away. But for those that do get added to the store, owning the Y for a trait allows you to set the price and supply sell the entire Y to someone else, or collect 5% of the royalties per sale. So, what this means is, a designer, for instance, could release a cool new pair of sunglasses, or drop an entire range, or even launch a clothing brand. Holders can then purchase community-created traits, but only apply one a month. And crucially, this all happens without changing the NFT's original metadata. So we'll see the formation of sub-communities and sub-DAOs, which can also collect a percentage of royalties. In a recent Twitter thread, the NFT investor, simply known as Guitar, reveals that Ute supplied for a registered trademark in August 2022 with the same IP attorney as Yuga Labs, NVIDIA, and Meta. Top train spotting marks there. Based on the wide array of marks applied for, Guitar speculates that the team is targeting an extremely wide array of uses across a range of different sectors. And you can check it out by clicking the link in the video description below. So go ahead and click it. Speaking of the team, Dust Labs, a tech startup spin-off rather than a parent company, just hit headlines after a $7 million seed raise involving the likes of FTX Ventures, Solana Ventures, Magic Eden, and Jump. And yes, it has been confirmed that VCs will indeed receive dust tokens with a four-year lockup, which should dampen any fears of an SBF dumperino anytime soon. Dust's price and volume pumped emphatically in advance of the mint, and while it's plummeted somewhat in the days since the mint, no surprises there, one would assume the use case is only going to expand along with Dust Lab's ecosystem at large. So what do you think? Will the Y model succeed and provide a working blueprint for others to follow? Are scholarships the new meta? Is that even the correct use of the word meta? I don't know. But hats off to young Frank for pushing the boat out and congratulations too on an impressive second album. But who cares what I think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe, check out the newsletter and have a wickedy, 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 wickedy. Oh, I can't do this. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.